Excellent. Get that done. And that done. Close that. All right. This is a weird angle. Hello, everybody. I just got 13 people all at once. I'm trying to get a better angle for you. Hi, Kalisha. Hello. I don't know what that is. A N M L V R O five. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Nita. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Mom. All right. That's a bit better. I don't love my angle today. The problem with lives is it changes the, the stuff. All right. So I decided today. Hi, Saya. Hi, Jamie. There we go. That makes more sense. I was not picking that up from the animal lover thing. I know nobody can see my face. I can pop down and say hello. I even did my makeup and now you don't get to see me. But it's either me or the sewing machine. And since this is a sewing tutorial, you kind of need to see the machine. Um, I'd also like to say, I got new hardware in today. They are love hearts. How cute is that? Uh, they come in silver, gunmetal grey and gold. I'm so excited. I only bought a small amount, and when I say small, I mean 60 of each colour. Because I wanted to see like how thick they were. In the photo, they looked a lot thicker, uh, thinner. But they're a nice, good weight, so I'm pretty excited about them. I got very excited. I had to tell someone. Oh, look, there's heaps of cool people. There's lots of regulars. Thank you for joining me on a regular basis. I really do appreciate it. And the fact that you come is why I do videos. Um, so I've noticed that a lot of people in my group are kind of losing their sojo a little bit. And I figured that might just be because you've been making bags all the time. So I thought I'd show you how to make like a super quick skirt. Uh, so, I got the measurements off the lady I'm making it for, so I just got her waist measurement where she wants it to sit, and the total length that she wants. Um, so, it worked out really well that her waist is the width of the fabric. So all I've done is cut two lengths at the length that I want. I've actually made it a little bit longer so that I can chop it down. So she wanted 46 around and 17 long. That's the finished size. Hello, everybody. Clothing's fun. I love making my own clothes. Nobody else ever looks like me. It's nice. Um, so I'm going to just chop off the salvage edge because it's white and I don't want to see it. And we're also doing something called French seaming today, where we don't need an overlocker, so I don't have to keep trying to move the camera. Hi, Raina. I bought ones that look like those pulls, but they don't fit my number five's nylon zippers. That's unfortunate. I did already test them, uh, so mine fit. I already played this game. Because uh, I used them in a video that I recorded yesterday, but you guys are going to get to see today. So they definitely fit, and actually very easily, which I like. Um, I've also decided I'm going to get in some resin zippers, because I've found some with really cool teeth and I want them. So I've bought, I've just, I've gone a bit nuts and bought a heap of stuff I probably didn't need, but whatever. Did I make my shirt? I did! I've even done a tutorial on this. Um, I modified a pattern because I wanted elastic kind of more bell flowy sleeves. Uh, so the rest of the pattern's the same and then I modified the sleeves. There is a video on it though. So far I've made three of these shirts because I love them. Uh, now the fabric that I'm using is from Spotlight and I've got a barcode number if you need it. Uh, it doesn't have a name, it just says Disney and the barcode number, which tells me it's specifically for Spotlight, because that's what they do. 
Um, so that's one done. I'm also going to be using uh, non-roll elastic. This is what they use in kids' shorts and stuff, so it doesn't get all twisted like that. It won't twist. It's um, it's really comfy. And another thing you should know about elastic is you should always pre-stretch it. I don't need that much, but yeah. Hi, Karina. Whoop. I'm going to keep chopping off the salvage edge. The reason I didn't do this before the start of the video is because... Basically, I didn't really want to. And because this is going to be a pretty quick sew, I think. Unless I get sidetracked talking, which is very like me. I'm trying to keep my lives consistent on day and time so that everybody that wants to join doesn't have to keep working out world clocks. That's why it's always the same time on a Wednesday. Because I get it, world clocks aren't fun. And after our summer, we're going to have to work it out again because I'm in daylight savings mode, so we'll have to go back an hour. Alright, so this is going to be my waistband. Hi, Christian. Health and fitness. Cool. I wish I was health and fit. I'm not. And I keep saying I'm going to get motivated and become health and fit, and I don't. I get sidetracked and make patterns at 2am instead. So for anyone that's in my Facebook group, you may have seen that I was up at 1am designing the front of a bag because I couldn't sleep until I did it. But now I've got to work out how to digitally do the pattern pieces. So that's a process for another day. Today I snipped all my tails. Oh, that's good! Always snip your tails. Now, I have put in a smaller needle than I normally use. So this is a size, I want to say 14. It is. I got these at Spotlight, so they're just like from a local sewing. They're just called Round Shank 14. Oh, it's 10 p.m. That's cool. Alright, so this is going to be really quick, guys. All we're going to do is I'm going to take my waistband first and I'm going to make sure that the pattern is the right way up because that's obviously important. And then to French seam, we're going to go wrong sides together first. I know this seems crazy, but bear with me. And then I'm just on a two and a half joining stitch length, so there's nothing spectacular about that. We're going to stay on the same stitch length the whole thing. So I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam. Trim my tails. Well, thank you for staying up at 11pm. I'm usually always asleep by then. Then I'm going to chop off like half of the seam allowance. And then I'm going to go right sides together like that and then stitch another quarter inch. Like that. And so from the outside we now have no raw edge and we have a sealed seam. Now people always, quite often, you can push this to one side and then top stitch it down. You'll actually see this on your sheets. So next time you put your sheet on your bed, just have a look at the corners, because this is how they do them. Fun, useless fact for you. And then trim tails. And yes, this looks like a giant waistband, but we're going to put elastic in it, so don't stress about that one. Hi, Jaded. Alright, so we're going to go right sides together first and we're going to close the loop. And then do a quarter inch seam. I'm going to move my scissors because they're annoying me. 6pm at night's not bad. You can watch a skirt while eating dinner. That works. Trim my tails. 
I now know why I had those scissors there because I need to trim this down. So the reason we trim down the seam allowance is so that when we do our other quarter inch, this doesn't poke out of your seam. This is like old school dressmaker stuff before overlockers were a thing. So I'm going to put right sides together and sew another quarter inch seam. Hi Maria! So now we have like a really big waistband. So I'm going to pop that aside and I'm going to do the same to the pieces of like the main panels of a skirt. Just ask to join your Facebook group. Only just found you. Welcome! Um, yay for join, joining my group. I will get to your approval after the video unless one of my moderators beat me. Alright, so again, I'm going to do wrong sides together. Now, if you've got an overlocker, you can just do right sides together and overlock the side. But I am not moving this camera back and forth to and from the overlocker. That's not going to work for a live. How's the weather? So it's sunny and very cold outside at the moment, but it is sunny, so yay to that. Um, I got my heater on, which is why I'm in this, because this is a rayon fabric, so it's far too cold, uh, like light to wear if it was actually cold, cold. So I put my heater on instead, because I wanted to wear it. So I'm just gonna stitch down the edge a quarter inch again. Right sides together. Oh, I also have some good news for people that were asking my group to do uh, one of the RLR Creations bags. I've contacted her and she has given me permission to do a couple of videos. So I will get onto that as well. We have a slow combustion fireplace. Ooh, that's cool. All right, trim down our seam allowance. The state of my sewing room at the moment is absolutely terrible because I was up last night designing a pattern. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna be doing the Teddy, uh, the Percival, and I don't know what else yet. They're the two so far. What size needle? So for vinyl, I use a size 18 needle. I lived in the tropics of Queensland and all I really wanted to see was like a hurricane. I know I just shouldn't want to live through that, but I just kind of wanted to experience it to fully understand and in the six years I lived there, there wasn't one. So I know I should be thankful for that, but I also now, it's hard, like, I get what you're going through, kind of, but I've never personally been through it. So that was very disheartening. Alright. We did get a flood, though. That sucked. So I'm just rolling this this seam in my fingers so that I can French seam it down. And I'm just using a black because the fabric's quite dark. I could have also used a dark green or like a burgundy, but I just figure black's going to go with everything. Since it's not my skirt. If it was my skirt, I would most likely add a, like a thick band along the bottom and do some embroidery, because that would be fun. My industrial machine skips stitches at times with an 18 needle. Um, so that could also be because your needle's old. That does happen. Um, it could be that your needle's old. It could be that there's like a glitch in your thread. It could be that your sewing machine's playing up. It could be that there are too many layers. There's a lot of factors into that. So I'm now just stitching that little seam down at a 1 8 inch from the seam. 
I'm just making sure that it's facing inwards. And then I'll do the same to the other end. Because this would be a great way to make a fun Christmas skirt for yourself. That's why I chose to do this on camera. Have I seen pictures of Katrina? I have not seen... I don't really look at Facebook very much. I look in my group because people ask me questions. But other than that, I don't really get on my computer very much. I'm usually sewing or cutting or, you know, sewing related stuff. Or I'm out at my horse. Oh, hello Kim. How's the Caribbean? Or Caribbean, however you'd like to pronounce it. Alright, wrong sides together again. If you're in a domestic machine making this, you could also do right sides together, so the opposite way, and then zigzag along the edge, if you have a zigzag. This doesn't have zigzag. So we're not doing that. And we're always back stitching at the end. Alright, and then I'm going to trim down this seam again. hurricane after I get off here just to have a look to be honest I'm not very good at reading the whole weather pattern thing that people show nobody ever really taught me so I don't really get it I don't understand what a high and a low pressure is I know that's something I probably shouldn't admit but I just I don't get it so this is just like a free this is just a simple skirt so yes it's a me made pattern I am happy to write up like a quick little instruction and give it away as a free kind of pattern in my sewing group. But basically you take your waist measurement of where you want the um, skirt to sit and then you work out how long you want it. So this one's going to be 46 inches around and 17 inches long. That's where we decided we wanted it. Um, and so what I've done is I've doubled the amount of fabric and I am going to add the elastic waistband because it's easier to do it that way. So I don't thread elastic, so I'm going to show you a fun way to do elastic without having to thread it through because I hate doing it. Oh, thanks, Robbie. I just love sewing. And if I can inspire you to go and make a Christmas skirt, that's awesome. Or a Halloween skirt, because Halloween's like on the weekend. Or a costume. You could make a skirt like this with a costume. You only need to do these French seams if you plan on chucking it in the wash. If it's just a once-off costume, you could skip most of the sewing that I'm doing. Oh, thank you. So this is, this is just a quilting cotton. So it's from Spotlight. It's one of their new ones. It's the stained glass window um, Beauty and the Beast fabric that America got ages ago and I was very jealous. So it's just a normal quilting cotton and I'm using Resant sewing thread. Um, I love Resant. It's my favourite. If I had to pick one, like, regular sewing thread to use that's not for bags, so for all my clothes, I love Resant. Um, you can usually get it at, like, smaller quilting stores, and it comes, and you can always tell when it's Resant, because it's got a cardboard centre that's red, and then it just tells you the colour that's on it and stuff. So this is a Tex 24. Um... And it says it's core spun, and there's a thousand meters on there. So I'm using a size 14 needle and the text 24 for Americans, and for Australians, it's just 
regular polyester sewing thread. If I don't have access to Resand, I like Gutterman as my second option because it's more readily available everywhere. Okay. So now I've got my loop. I know you can't really see it. But we've got a loop and there are no raw edges on the inside, which makes it machine washable, guys. Um, can it be used on a domestic? Yes. So this is definitely domestic machine friendly. I probably should have done this whole tutorial on my domestic machine. I didn't think about it till now. That's my bad. Pinch them together and pull. I love doing that little wiggle. So you're very welcome. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to take our band, find a seam, and we're going to join the seams because they're all the same size. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one seam, that, well this one's already stitched down, so I'm going to put this seam in the opposite way. So if you've ever made quilts, this is what you do, and it's going to keep the seam flatter. So you're going to have one bolt go one way and the other bulk is stitched down the other way. And then I'm just going to stitch it around. Now I'm not going to pin it, but if you are new to sewing, you should pin it. This is just a habit and practice. But I really want to make sure that that seam is lined up well because I don't want it to draw attention to it. So I'm going to sew probably about three-eighths of an inch. I'm just going to do slightly bigger than a quarter. And I don't have to French seam this because I'm going to tuck it under so you're not going to see it. And this is beautiful fabric. I'm glad to see you're showing us how to make clothes. Um, so I'm actually, actually, funny you should say about the collar, I am going to show you, I'm going to do tutorials on my Christmas skirt, my brother's short sleeve, like, button-up shirt, like a bowler shirt, because um, that's what he's asked for for Christmas. I'm going to do hubby some shorts and my child, like, a little boy's shirt. So you'll be getting tutorials on the whole Christmas thing, Mainly because I want it, I'm hoping it inspires you to make a Christmas outfit. So I will be doing that. Hi Helena. Helena? I'm sorry, I'm not great with pronunciation. It's much easier to type a name. You can just copy it. Alright. So I'm just working my way around. I'm lining up the fabrics as I go. I will be doing some pinning eventually, I think. Or at least some ironing, so I might have to turn Bruce on. Bruce is what I've named my iron, for anybody that doesn't follow along with that. Alright, so seam, I'm up to the next seam, so I'm going to line them up. And it should all be perfect, because we've done everything the same. I'm going to backstitch over that seam to really reinforce it. Would using a serger on the seams instead of French seams hold up in the washing machine? It 100% does. My clothes I make myself, I overlook. I'm just not doing it today because A, a lot of you don't have access to a serger or an overlocker, depending on where you live, they're called different things. And two, because I'm live, I have to literally carry you back and forth and I reckon some of you would get motion sickness. Would like to know what's the difference between a domestic and industrial. So this is an industrial machine. It's more heavy duty and is designed to sew all day, every day. So it's got, it's got a bigger motor for a start and everything's metal. So to pick this table up with the machine in it, I reckon it weighs about 40 kilos. I struggle to do it. I always have to get me and hubby to do it, and if it's going up a hill or anything, I get hubby and one of his mates to lift it, because it is insanely heavy. Um, a domestic is designed, like it's still designed to sew, but usually lighter weight stuff, and it's not designed to be used all day, every day. It will die very quickly because of the heavy amount of use. 
So this industrial now has what's called a servo motor on it. Uh, so that means that you can't hear it right now, but it's on. I used to have what's called a clutch motor, which is basically a rotary motor and is constantly on and making noise, constantly turning, and then it's got a clutch to go like a like a manual car basically so the pedal is the clutch uh, with the servo motor that i've got on you can actually adjust it to speed it up or down depending on what you're after so domestics domestics definitely have their place i own one i make it do all my buttonholes i can do little quick projects i can like fix a seam on hubby's pants Whereas this industrial, I use it most of the time because I'm sewing all day. So I hope that helped. Um, I'm not sure where to get one. I got this machine secondhand off Facebook Marketplace for $500. Um, I, I didn't have the money for a new one. I still don't. I also don't need to upgrade. This machine does great. Um, I don't record everything I sew, so I'm sewing pretty much all day, and it's still good. And I just snapped my thread. Whoops. So, it, depending on your budget will depend on where you should shop. If you want to buy a brand new one, I know there's, depending on where you live again, in Australia, in Melbourne, there's a place called Elizabeth Machines, and there's a Faf's um factory so i assume they have industrials as well in townsville where i used to live there's a place called sewing trade and they sell brand new and i think they used to sell secondhand machines um so i don't know i'm i don't a lot of people buy jukies juki seems to be like the favorite but i don't have one this one does great it's had one service in the five or six years i've owned it and i've had never had a problem so there you go oh zumba zumba's fun can i sew leather i can sew thin leather uh not insanely thick leather though it doesn't like that but yes i can sew some thinner leathers i quilt on a vintage singer all metal See, all metal machines are good. The new machines, like the domestics, a lot of their parts are made from carbon fiber to make them less heavy, so they're lighter to carry around. Uh, the problem with that, though, is is eventually that they um, degrade and kind of wear away. I did live in Townsville in Australia, in northern Queensland. I've only just moved down to uh, country Victoria at the start of this year because uh, hubby's in the army. And it's penciled in that we're moving to Brisbane next. But that's not 100% yet. So if you're in Brisbane, don't get too excited until I officially tell you I'm moving there. And then I'll be running sewing lessons. Yay! So I'm pre-stretching my elastic right now. I've probably stretched too much. You should always pre-stretch your elastic because I promise it gets wider. Will my leather needle sew vinyl? Yes, it will. 100% it will. Uh, but you'll want a Teflon foot or you'll want to buy some Teflon tape. So this is Teflon tape. Uh, I bought it on eBay. I think the whole roll was maybe $13 delivered. But now I can put the Teflon tape on the bottom of any foot I already own so I don't have to buy more feet. Uh, and then this will slide over the vinyl so that it won't catch and pucker. All right, so now I need my elastic. So I'm going to do 38 inches. And that will stretch up to the size of 46. You don't want to do 46 inches of elastic because then it won't stay. It'll fall because that's the total. But you know, the elastic's hard. The firmer the elastic the less you want to take off. Like if you get a high density elastic, you obviously don't want to take up as much as I have. But because this is quite, this is a kid's elastic. So it's quite stretchy, as you can see. So that, so the five inches stretches up to 10. So it can basically double itself. 
so I've taken off a fair amount of elastic to make sure that it will stay on her. And also by doing that, um, if she loses any weight, it's still going to fit for a while before she has to go in and adjust the elastic. So, I'm going to do it differently to a lot of people. I'm going to make a loop. I'm going to overlap it about, about half an inch. And then I'm going to sew the loop together because I am not threading it. So I just go back and forth a lot to really make sure that that's not going to come undone. There's a lot of layers there. It's just like a thick black line. But that will be fine. Here's where the fun bit starts. So I'm going to start at a seam because that's where I like to start. So what we want is we want this seam that we did to join it to face up into the skirt band. So it wants to come towards this edge. And then I'm just going to lay the elastic there. Roll the elastic over and then tuck the raw edge under like that. I know that that's potentially a lot. So now I've created a loop where there's no raw edge where the elastic still fits. Right? So I can thread that through. It's not too tight. So now all I have to do is sew that band down. So I'm just going to do this in very small portions and I'm going to repeat myself so that you guys get it. So I'm going to backstitch. I'm going to stitch a couple of stitches and then I'm going to come and readjust. So I'm going to lay my elastic flat. I'm going to tuck under about a quarter of an inch and I'm going to come and lay it directly over that seam and then stitch. And then always stop with your needle down. And then I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to make sure the elastic's flat. Tuck it under. Now, you may want to pre-iron this little tuck that I'm doing. So you could actually go along with your iron and fold up that seam and then press it all the way around. And then it would be easy, like it'd be one less step to do while doing this. Another thing that you could do if you wanted to was you could come and you could pin it with some pins and go all the way along and do that as well. But so long as you go slowly, this way will actually work fine and you're skipping a lot of steps. We don't have to thread it. We don't have to, I don't have to iron it. I don't have to do pretty much anything with it, to be honest. Except make sure that I don't stitch it. And always stop with your needle down so it doesn't shift. So again, I'm just going to separate here to make sure that this seam is pushed upwards. Tuck under and then stitch along there. And so as you can see, and you can't really see because it's a print, but now we're just... We've got like a band and then the elastic. Now it doesn't look gathered yet, but I haven't done very much. So bear with me, I am getting there. And then you can start pulling the elastic this way so that it gathers for you. So again, I'm gonna tuck under the edge, bring it down, and stitch. Tuck under the edge, bring it down so it's in line with the other stitches I did before, and stitch. So long as you don't stitch the elastic, we're fine. So you can even pull it from this end if you wanted to, to gather it up this way. Are you stretching the elastic? Not yet. I don't have to stretch the elastic because I've still got a lot of space. I will have to do that when I get closer to the end, but for now, we're okay. So I will have to stretch it.
Then I'm just going to readjust again. Tuck it under, fold it over. So your band, you need to make it double the width. So to cut this band, whatever elastic you're using, you need to do double the width, add half an inch for seams, and then a quarter inch for movement. So you want to do double plus three quarters of an inch. Good morning. Hi, Frederica. So you can stretch the elastic if you're worried that you're going to stitch over it. Oh, I just snapped my thread. But I can show you now, right? So it's straight and then it's just gathering at that top bit because I've got the separate band. So I've still got a lot to go. And the other reason that we do it this way is because then you're guaranteed to not make your um, hole too thin that your elastic won't fit. Because it has to fit, you're doing it as you go. I don't like the tube method, I hate having to sew it that way actually. So then you can just gather it up like so. And as I get further around, I'm going to have to start pulling on the elastic, but we're not there yet. So, I might grab Bruce, my iron. And plug him in. I've now got a really long extension cord so that he can move around with me. This is Bruce, my new iron, because my other iron finally died. It was a very sad moment for me. Can you use any table for an industrial sewing machine? I believe so. They all are approximately the same size. I mean, there's a couple of different sizes, but depending on, this is like your basic size, and then you can get like really long ones. But they come with the table. So you can use any industrial machine table with any industrial machine. This machine actually is on hinges and sits in like a pile of oil. So, so long as the table's got that fancy part, yes, you can. You can't just use like your kitchen table though. That's not going to work out for you. But you can get semi-industrial machines. So they, they sit between this and a domestic. So they're more heavy duty than a domestic, but they're more portable than this. So they are an option as well. So I'm just going to show you the ironing method, because I thought maybe I should do that. And my thread broke, so why not? Feels like a good time. So I'm just going to iron that seam up. And I turn off my steam, because I probably don't need that much. So I'm ironing the seam upwards, so that it's going to stay exactly where I want it. And then... I can come along here and just fold that over the little bit I need and then press it in place without burning my fingers. And then you just work down your fabric and move your iron as you go. Right, so now that I've just done that little bit, put my iron over there. Come back to where I left off. Back stitch. So now this will already fold over to there and the other piece is going to stay where I want it to sit. Needle down. Bring it over. Make sure there's no twists. I can feel a twist. Like so. You can pull on the elastic if you want to to make sure it's out of the way. And then stop with your needle down. Bring it over. Pull. Stitch. Needle down. 
Hi, Ann. And Thelma, I just make my own clothes because I like to look different. One day I'll do like a tour of my wardrobe. Not that it's very big. But there's a lot of cool stuff in there. So you can stretch the elastic if that makes you more comfortable. You can also grab it from both sides. So that it's not being stubborn. So you can grab it here and here, pull the elastic and then stitch. And that way it's not going to, because if you're just pulling from this side, it's not going to go through the feed dogs. Which is also not something we want. And then again, we're just going to shift it and I'm going to trim those tails so I don't forget about them later. I can usually do this a lot quicker, but I keep checking uh, the camera and I'm trying to talk. Oh, what happened? Somebody said something that got deleted. Hi, Anne. And thank you. I just, I don't know, I like to be different. I feel like that's why we sew, isn't it? So that we can make things that we can't buy in a shop. So this fabric, um, I've used less, less than a metre for this skirt. So even at full price of $25, I don't know if you could like go into a store and buy a Disney skirt for 25 bucks, but I feel like you probably could. So that's pretty cheap. getting a lot of like random stuff. I must come up a lot higher in YouTube than I used to. And the reason I say this is because I have to keep deleting like spam posts from a lot of different stuff. I didn't even see it. All I saw was flash deleted. But what's a sewing video without one crazy person? Apart from me, obviously. So again, rolling it on. It's probably definitely easier if you're new to this to iron that edge down. Because uh, otherwise it can get a little bit fiddly. You could also go along and pin the whole thing. Or pin sections and then come back and stitch them if you wanted to. You can also finger press it. Alright. You can pull the elastic with one hand and hold it with the other. Like, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. There's not really any wrong way. As long as you don't stitch the elastic, you're doing good. And it also won't matter if this is the first piece of clothing you ever decide to make and that seam is, like, crazy wonky, you're not going to see it because it's elastic. You can't see your mistakes. Oh, that's funky looking. Text. No idea what it says though. And I can't sit here and Google Translate while I'm sewing. Sorry guys. So again, moving along. Tuck it under, stitch it down. And then we just have to hem the bottom. So I'm going to pull out a different foot that you never get to see me use. I've got a, um, a roll hem foot. So I'm going to show you how awesome they are for clothing. So if you ever decide you want to make some clothing, it's amazing. So I'm definitely over halfway. I don't actually have that much more to go. I haven't been paying attention to how fast I'm going because, you know, who cares? You guys can come and go as you please and I'm going to make it anyway. 
And if everybody leaves and nobody wants to talk to me anymore, I'll just turn the camera off. Like, that's okay. Clothing isn't for everyone, uh, but if you are new to sewing, try it out. You might love it. I love it. Oh, my thread just broke again. This is being very naughty thread today. It's never normally this breaky. Although it has been in that drawer for a while, so that could also be it. Hi, Cheryl. If I wanted to add a lining material, would I attach it to the skirt after I tack the gathers together? So what I would do, okay, so if you want to put a lining in this, I would stitch it to the bottom first. And then bring it up to this so that it's flat and then stitch your band on to join the tops. I would probably tack it with a basting stitch. So I would stitch it to the bottom right sides together, turn it over, iron it, stitch it. So top stitch it or under stitch it. That's something I will teach you in another video because I don't need to do it on this one. Um, and then I would lay it flat, baste it to the top and then add this band like I am. So it would be tacked at the top and the bottom. That's how I would attach a lining. Skirts are pretty forgiving, I promise. Skirts are very forgiving, actually. So we're nearly finished this. I haven't quite finished. I've still got that little bit. But so far it's looking lovely. And because this is a directional fabric, I chose to do a straight gathered skirt instead of a circle skirt. Uh, because I don't like it when the pattern kind of goes sideways off the end. That's just my personal thing. I like it to be straight and sit where I tell it to. But you could definitely line this if you wanted to. You could add a split. This is just like the super base model of a skirt. A gathered skirt, that is. Make sure we backstitch. Can I make a pair of jeans next time? Um, to be honest, I don't like making jeans. I don't own all the rivets and stuff you need. I can make a pair of pants with a zipper and a button, but I don't have the stuff that the jeans have. Nor do I think I own a jeans pattern, now that I think about it. But you could probably make any fabric, like any, pa any pants pattern out of jeans. All right, so I've only got like a very small amount to go. You'll notice that I've started definitely um, stretching that elastic. And I'm just shifting it around. Tuck under the raw edge and stitch down. I will be doing a pants tutorial. Um, and I've done a circle skirt well, um, tutorial already. So next year, uh, because I'm now doing wholesale orders and it looks like she's going to start ordering like large amounts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have time to make more tutorials and eventually I'm going to run out of bag patterns to do. So I will be starting to add in a lot more like dresses, skirts, little boys clothes, stuff like that. So that you can see if you want to make one. Or sew along with it if you think that clothing is very, very difficult. The doubling of the fabric was possibly a little bit much. This is a very tight skirt um, fabric-wise. But that's okay. It's not going to harm it in any way. Tiniest bit to go. Tuck under the raw edges. Got like two inches to go and then I'll look up at the camera again. Promise. Right. Done. Oh, nobody wrote anything. Cool. I didn't miss anything. So now you can just maneuver oops, don't pull it that hard you'll snap something maneuver the fabric around the skirt so it's going to sit evenly
And so now we just need to hem it. You've got this nice gathered top, we just need to hem the bottom. So I'm going to change my needle. My screwdriver is a bobbin, because I'm classy like that. I'm going to lift the foot up. Can I have a good look at the fabric? Of course you can. Here. So it is the the hourglass, uh, not the hourglass, the glass window style from the movie. All right, roll hem foot. Let's do your thing. So this is a roll hem foot. It's got like a funky little twisty thing going on at the front. Uh, and this is what they use on like the edge of handkerchiefs and tablecloths and in this case skirts. Uh, and you can get different um, size feet. So the bigger, you can get different sizes and they can do bigger or smaller rolls. So on your tablecloth, they just use a bigger one than this. But I've only got one size, so this is the size we're using. I think a skirt of like satin with lace on top. That would be fun. I'm really sorry about that, Teresa. I don't know why it stops sending stuff. It's actually quite frustrating to me too. Do I interface this fabric? Not for clothing, no. Um, if I was doing a different type of top, so if I was going to do a zipper and have like a band, I would interface it with the medium woven, but for this particular skirt, no. So what I've just done then is I've tucked under the raw edge and then folded it on itself, which is what a rolled hem is, but I just need to help the foot kind of get started. And move all the tails back and out of the way. So I'm going to put my foot down on top of that, do a couple of stitches. Oh, Ooh, there's a bell. I didn't even know that. There you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to lift the fabric up so that it goes into the curve of the foot like that. And now it's just curving it for me. So all I have to do is make sure that the fabric is feeding in there and it's stitching it shut. When I've got a little bit more, I'll come closer to the camera for you. Should be able to reach you now. So now it's actually rolled under. Oh, no, it's not going to focus. Of course it's not. <sighs> it's rolled under that raw edge and stitched it down. I'm really sorry it's not focusing. Um, so another really cool thing you could do if you had one of these feet is make like um, personalized embroidered handkerchiefs and stuff. YouTube doesn't like me either if it makes you feel any better. I set things to um like release when I want them to and then they still don't do it. So you can actually, this is quite a quick way of hemming. If you have a serger or an overlocker, you could serge the whole edge, turn it up and stitch it. Or you could manually double fold this and just pre-iron it. Um, the foot's obviously just a quicker option. So we're nearly back to the start already. So even with me talking, that's two meters of fabric that I just hemmed in like, I don't know, a minute. And then when you get to the end, you just take it out of the loop and pull it and it will tuck under the final little bit and then you can backstitch. It's done. Unsubscribe and resubscribe. That could work, maybe. It is definitely a practice, and you also, when you're using a rolled hem foot, you want to make sure that the fabric is directly square on. You don't want to be coming at any kind of angle. So if you're holding it this way and coming at an angle, it's more likely to not loop.
through the foot. Uh, it is a practice thing, but if you let it get started and then continue on, you should be all right. Oh, that's smart to set diaries on your phone. If I'm ever going to do a live, I'm always going to do them on Wednesdays at 9am my time. 9am gives me enough chance to like prep a video if I haven't got there yet or, you know, put makeup on. Not that you can see me, but, you know, I did do it. I promise. Um, so it's always going to be at the same time because I understand the time differences across the world is really hard to constantly work it out. So my time is Melbourne, Australia time, uh, which at the moment I think is plus 11 GTM. Uh, it's usually plus 10, but I've currently got daylight savings. So it's 9.52 a.m. at the moment. But yeah, so that's the skirt done. Super cute, elastic top, simple rolled hem bottom. And it was made in, what, 50 minutes. The only thing I did off camera was cut the fabric and I did that with a rotary cutter and a ruler. So that took a whole 10 seconds. I know I'm more advanced than some people, but I still feel like you could try one of them and have an adorable outfit. It's 9.52 in the, 10.52 in the UK. But P. Oh yeah, so you like, ooh, so that means it's yesterday. I have seen the gathering feet. Um, I see people use them a lot on like little girls clothes. I was going to do a different type of gathered skirt, but she didn't want a zipper. So if it was going to be a zipper, I was going to show you how to gather fabric using just this machine and a straight foot. Um, but I might do that in another video because I still need more skirts. It's about to be like hot and summery here. So I'm actually going to get to start wearing dresses for videos because it's going to be hot enough, which would be awesome. So I promise I'm going to try and do a lot of different types of clothing to kind of cater for everyone. And I will be doing men's clothing as well because I have a husband and my brother wants a really cool Rosella shirt for Christmas. So that's probably next week's video is a buttoned up shirt, short sleeve shirt for a man. I will also do a long sleeve one, probably for myself, but to make a men's and woman's is the same. It's just a slightly different shape that they cut, unless it's got darts and stuff, but I don't make myself darts. These are really fun skirts. They're super quick. Um, and if you do with the elastic, you can actually leave leave a gap when you're sewing it shut. So when you get back to the, when you go all the way around, you leave about that much of a gap right before the end. Um, and so what you can do is you can pull the elastic out and make it longer or shorter so it fits the, the child for longer. Or if you're on a diet uh, and you're trying to lose weight but you still want to look nice now, you could make this, leave the gap, and then as you lose weight, you can just cut the elastic and make it shorter and shorter so it will still fit you. <laughs> It'd be lovely if I knew the future. If I knew the future, I could win Tax Lotto and do glorious things, but it unfortunately doesn't quite work like that. If I could win the Tax Lotto, I would make a sewing retreat. I would buy like a hotel with a heap of land and have all my stuff and then have, you know, a sewing retreat and like the rooms to stay in. And then like the first four rounds would be free and people could win it and be amazing. But I don't even enter the lotto, so I don't think I'm ever going to win because I'm not in it. You've got to be in it to win it, and I'm not. So one can dream. It would be amazing. My life goal, my new life goal is to either run retreats or be constant guest speakers at other people's retreats. I don't mind which. I just like teaching people. So, yeah. Anyway, that is the skirt. Oh, and I missed a tail. Always trim your tails. I have plans. 
So the reason I've started writing patterns is so that I have patterns to teach at workshops slash retreats that I will eventually run. But I obviously need to have patterns. Or I suppose I could get like do the royalty thing and use other people's patterns. I don't know. We'll, we'll get there. Anyway, I'm rambling now. So I'm going to get off. Um, thank you for joining me. I hope this was um, somewhat helpful. I hope you try one. Uh, join my Facebook group if you have troubles and I can help you. Um, yeah. Until next time, guys. Actually, in like four minutes, there's going to be a video releasing on my channel. And then at 11 o'clock, there's another one because I'm on fire. Anyway, bye, guys.